the women come from all walks of life. There are high school students, and there are roller derby champions. Yet they all have the same goal, to last eight seconds on a powerful bucking horse. There's a lot of commitment in this. Uh, between time, energy, money, the potential of getting hurt. And as they travel and they get hurt, and then they still have to keep up a day job. Day job's pretty difficult to keep up. Welcome to the resurgence of women's bronc riding. Quit's not my dictionary, unfortunately. It's probably not very smart, but. I've always really loved the sport of rodeo. I never really got into it until I was 10, and I really had somebody give me the push to get into it and find a trainer. And I've always really loved, you know, how rough and tumble the rough stock is. I, I like it. These ladies are all tough competitors, but they're kindred spirits and fast becoming friends. Eighteen-year-old Sarah from Weatherford, Texas, has worked with horses much of her life. Well, I've been team roping and starting colts for quite a few years, and uh, I've just rode some crazy colts, and I find it pretty enjoyable. And I know a few people that do ranch rodeos and ranch bronc, and I decided I'd try and jump on one and see how I do. <laughs> Duke, another experienced rider from North Texas, is just getting back into the sport after an unexpected side tour. I stopped rodeoing immediately when I found out I was pregnant. I actually just had some brand new rodeo equipment come in and I was ready to start the season and surprise, pregnancy test positive. So I put everything aside, it was not worth the risk. Tell you what, I, I sure don't wanna stand before God one day and have to answer to him when he says, why did you, you know, why did you be so careless with this blessing that I gave you? So I thought, nah, I'll hang it up. And I've hung it up for, for about two years now and I'm trying to dust all my stuff back up and spray some WD-40 in my joints and get rolling again. But since I had little Joe, my baby boy, that turns one next month, things have changed a little bit. Because you know, you're still thinking the ride's the utmost important, but then you have this little thing gnawing at you from the side saying, you cannot get hurt. Be smart, pay attention to your gut, hold on, don't get in a bind, don't do anything that's gonna get you killed or out of that boy's life. I mean, it, that's been quite a change. For Jane, a 19-year-old student from Virginia, attending college opened her to new opportunities. Well, I've always wanted to do it back home in Virginia, but we didn't have a lot of places that offered it with women and stuff. So once I moved down to Texas for college, there's more opportunities. I've always barrel raced and goat tied and did pole bending and all that sorts of stuff. So I never bronc ride until the other day. <laughs> so far, I like it a lot. 16-year-old Rainey hails from Kentucky. She's no stranger to horses, but this will be her second time to sit in the chute. I've always really loved the sport of rodeo. I never really got into it until I was 10, and I really had somebody give me the push to get into it and find a trainer. And I've always really loved, you know, how rough and tumble the rough stock is. I, I like it. And I like getting in with the boys, and I like getting my hands dirty. And nobody around me will let the girls get in with the boys and get their hands dirty. So uh, if I have to come to Texas to do it, then I'll come to Texas to do it. You know, I might not be the first girl that's ever done it, but <laughs> I want to be the girl that's done it that they're going to remember. 22-year-old Maddie also learned about bronc riding at college. I mean, it's always been interesting. My roommate actually is a ranch bronc rider. And we were joking one day, he said, you should try this. And I was like, yeah, I'm in. And then he contacted a guy who runs the Iron Cowboy riding and said she wants to do it. I thought it was a joke, and then he called me. He's like, hey, we need more girl riders. And he said he'd pay for all the fees, so I was like, I'm in. And then from that, Daryl uh, contacted me and asked if I wanted to do this whole series, and once again, I was in. <laughs> Poteet, Texas, on a good day, has a population of just over 3,000. But when the Strawberry Festival and Rodeo come to town, it blossoms to over 100,000 attendees. For the cowgirls, Poteet represents a bigger audience and more exposure and practice for their rodeo career. It's a, definitely a different vibe than Grandma's. Grandma's more laid back, you know, this is people everywhere, you know, everybody's getting ready. At Graham, you know, we just walked in, they ran the horses in, we got on and we left. Daryl brings the cowgirls in for some last minute motivation. 
I'm gonna tell you right now, don't believe a damn thing that you hear from anybody if it doesn't come from me or come from Wesley McManus. Just straight up, all right? Because there's guys, they don't want you here. They think y'all need to be racing barrels or open cows, all right? Now, like I said last time, if something happens in the arena, y'all take a hard spill, uh, you just have an issue or whatever, let's not do anything in the arena. I'll be the first person, I'll probably be right next to you before you hit the ground if something happens. But everybody got, everybody has to hear the whistle today, all right? Everybody good with that? Yep. Put it in. Hear the oh, whistle on the horse, not come hear on, the whistle on the dirt. Come on, come on. What was it saying? I don't like that. Don't eat dirt. Don't eat dirt on three. <laughs> Jump in here. One, two, three. Don't, don't eat, eat dirt. dirt. Jane Rivercum. Jane gets some help on hopscotch. Come on, cowgirl. Yeah, this is one we're looking for. East Coast said, let me show you. How about that East Coast frog buster? Pumped up. Duke positions herself on Bronx JK. Duke Wimberly from Cool, Texas. Watch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hold on tight, cowgirl. You want to talk about grip, try. Come on, Pokey. 69, 69 points for Nick Wimberly. Rainey prepares for dive bomber. Cowgirl is tough, and she got a bucker. Head first into that strawberry festival dirt. They gritty and tough cowgirl. She is frustrated as she walks out. Put your hands together, protein, for that cowgirl. She is not satisfied. Maddie gets ready on Bronk Painted Nightmare, but it's a rough start. Shut the gate, let's do it again. Maddie Wilson, College Station, Texas. Come on, cowgirl, yeah! Watch, watch. Come on, Poteen, help her a little bit. Hard way for a cowgirl to make a living. For Maddie Wilson, her tumble may be more serious than just a bruised ego. 